good morning one and all so i am very happy to invite uh, our alumni dr g balasubramani is a biotechnologist he was the first batch here msc he did his msc biotechnology and also phd biotechnology he is now working at csr <laughs> as a principal scientist biotechnology and uh, he is uh, handled and handling several dbt natp icr and nap projects and he was a co developer for nine bt cotton varieties and sequences also gene bank sequences he has submitted nine sequences and publication several publications he has also made and uh, international deputation he was on deputation to usda texas in 2001 and also he, is, he was involved in dna sequencing so <clears throat> in with the nagpur university he has guided around 28 msc students and two phd and two postdoc so he has as, uh, he has got several special assignment also as he is a bio safety officer of cacr and also dbt nominee for four companies of their institutional bio safety he is also the vigilance officer and bt referred lab in charge and also itm ucacr with this brief introduction i invite our <laughs> dr balasubramani sir the guest lecture on crop improvement in cotton so welcome sir thank you sir for a brief introduction i feel so happy to be here the nostalgic feeling first of all i thank to the organizer pgd in office dr sendil for inviting me to deliver a lecture on what is going on the cotton especially the future challenges to cotton improvement this topic is not only to the cotton you can uh, interpret with the any other crops also so coming to the the topic on this the future challenges in the crops crop improvement especially this is the the kind of evolution of research you can see that first you know that natural selection everybody knows that this is the uh, where all the crops are region wise zone wise characterized and farmers are cultivating without any problem second one is the the breeding program the breeding program mainly to improve the the existing uh, the qualities or traits back crossing method or pedigree selection all those things they are doing but the breakthrough is the the heterosis breeding heterosis breeding is you know that this uh, heterosis the hybrid vigor when you cross the two uh, distantly or wild parents so you can get the the heterosis that you can harvest it so this program still it is active in most of the breeding program in all the crops yeah then the third one is the mutation breeding you know the physical and chemical uh, program they used but it is not that much popular still some some institute some crops are successful they are doing it the fourth one is the tissue culture of course the tissue culture it started quite long back is 1907 the abel and first uh, demonstrated that the cell cultures can be cultured in the artificially so he was the father of uh, tissue culture also the tissue culture mainly this was started to create the variability why because the 2n number cells that is somatic cells that creates the kind of variations that is the somocular variations so we can create the variability that's why the tissue culture initially started but this became the very primary requirement for the development of transgenic crops that is the latest stage that when the gm crop started most of the crops more than now 80 crops are they are doing the gm crops so the gm crops if you want to develop it so you need the tissue culture it's a basic because we are targeting the gene transfer in somatic normal somatic cells that somatic cell will act as embryo to develop a complete plant so this tissue culture become the primary importance for the development of gm crops any crops you want you need the tissue culture the robust protocol of the tissue culture the other one they later they started the mass mark resistant selections so you know the markers markers means there are phenotypic marker biochemical marker and genomic marker is there but phenotypic markers very simple you know that for example you look at the the um, 
carrot for example i'm telling reddish color of carrot it's linked with some of the sweet sweetness of the character their quality traits so quality traits we can't make out unless you taste it so if you in the mixer of the carrot you can select the based on the colors because this is a phenotypic characters the red color is linked with the the sugar so that way you can select it but the limited number of phenotypic markers are available but if you look at the genomic markers there are number of uh, uh, millions of uh, markers are available so only thing is you need to tap it or identify that how this marker is linked with some of the traits or quality traits or quantitative traits that we can identify there are number of markers are available the famous one is the ssr issr and srp marker the latest one is the snp markers mainly used for the dna sequencing for genotyping the last one is the genome editing of course genome editing is the current topic most of the project uh, funded projects you can find that everyone is started the genome editing because you can edit exactly the uh, even single nucleotide with the help of the this technique called the crispr cas this is the the research going on across the world if you take any research or any crop research institute these are the main uh, target or mandate they are having first one is the increasing the yield or biomass that is the because this any institute if you take that they demand is keep on going on uh, because of the uh, increasing population always we want that increasing the yield whether it's crop uh, uh, most of the crop research institute okay. this is the the main target and also the increase or increase of biomass the second one is the resistant crops against the insect pest because 30 to 40 percent of our loss is due to the insect and pest disease so this we want that resistant crops to be developed the third one is the abiotic stress this abiotic stress is mainly the heat and the drought and water stress these are the major reasons where our yield is going down okay. that has to be developed the the resistant crops the fourth one is the improving the existing traits or better quality nutrition quality so all these mandate only any crop research institute people are working on in the currently so this is the the genetic engineering in the first uh, the gene editing program where uh, it can help or improve the existing system by adding or deleting the genes so second one is creating the new organism or products you know that many new organisms are developed mainly increasing the yield third one is the understanding the nature of biology this would help to increase the yield as per the requirement because we understand the genetic sequences or we can improve the genetic sequences with the help of unrelated organisms also we can transfer the genes from one source to the another because the commonality is present the pore basis that uh, atgc so this is the the normal script for the most of the genetic uh, content of the living organism especially from primitive organism virus to the advanced human so you can find that the nitrogenous bases are common for all the living organism because of that we could uh, transfer from one to another organisms and also it will give the quick solutions for example like bt genes so bt gene is from bacteria now we are transferring to the cotton they are transferring the bt so to solve the some specific problems so this will quick solution it can give of course agronomy agricultural success will come only through the biotechnology because they all the breeders are stagnated with the maximum uh, improving the the crop by crossing our limited resources they are not able to break the barriers so we want to break the barriers means only the agriculture What? biotechnology can help increasing the yield and long term sustainability also will come only through the agriculture biotechnology of course the last one is the we are going to discuss more about the genome editing so that specific sites the the gene can be transferred this is just to tell about the cotton of course this is a, a microbe so i always tell about that why this cotton is important anybody is working also any crop normally they will tell about that this is very important crop like that i also put that one this is very important most common fabrics in our wardrobe is all this the the properties you know that it is a safe to use the cotton and you can see that how much uh, million of growers 32 million of growers over 100 million fam families are involved in this cotton program so 83.7 million bales are produced every year it's this average 80 countries are involved and five con five continents but india is the leader one because 
area wise if you look at that india stands first in the area wise okay 12 million hectares but if you look at the productivity productivity we are in 21st place so this mainly problem is our area 60% comes under the the rain fed he is a father of hybrid technology i told about the atrocis ct patel okay he is a cotton scientist from the agriculture university that station is the cotton research station surat what he did he only the first person to develop the hybrid uh, the shankar four or that hybrid four h4 in 1970 he crossed the gujarat 67 variety into american nectarilis and he is uh, this became the the revolution in the atrocis breeding so still the private people are utilizing properly the cotton the uh, atrocis or uh, hybrid program some of the can be easily controllable by these people so uh, industry the private industry completely taken over the cotton and these two states are first initially started the cultivating the cotton hybrids these all the some of the challenges to cotton production not only cotton you can interpret with any crops because these are the major challenges coming to the uh, in any crops one is the insect pest and disease mainly the low yield i told you 30 to 35 to 40% goes because of the the insect pest in cotton case bollworm is a major one because this attacks only the bolls that is a fruiting bodies now the recent uh, uh, for the past two decades they are able to manage the bollworm complex but the recent days the pink bollworm so this one pink bollworm the pectinophora gossypillae this pink bollworm developed the resistant against the the uh, uh, cry protein become the uh, menace for our uh, cotton growers of course the sucking pest and uh, disease in clcv clcv is a major problem in uh, northern part of india so this particular disease has come from the pakistan this is through the some of the white fly uh, this is a transmitter second one is the changing climate because the gradual increasing the trend of the heat drought or unexpected rain this all the reducing the the yield third one is the competitive ability with synthetic fiber because the uh, textile industry is dominated by the synthetic fiber although the cotton is uh, uh, fighting with them so now they is increasing the petroleum prices especially for the transport the farmers are not getting the the good uh, uh, advantage so farmers are shifting to the other crops because they have to wait for 6 months to get this uh, the price now the price also goes down because there is no international market so the farmers are shifting to the other crops so this will become important problem for the cotton productions yield losses and contamination this is mainly the the labor problem in the cotton picking now the automation is coming and also some of the defoliants are used for the uh, cotton picking uh, mechanically these are some of the issues the yield losses and contamination of course i told you that the breeders are maximum achieved the the yield so through this conventional method and transgenic approaches they do it, did it but unless if you use some uh, diverse genetic parents it's very difficult to break the genetic barrier so these are some of the issues this is a some uh, road map on production already these four we discussed mostly now we will see this particular uh, uh, things this we are going to discuss now genetic resources now the genetic resources is the main thing to increase the yield mainly the sequencing of genome most of the genomes are now sequenced complete genome sequences are available mainly identifying the genes or some of the alleles or qtls these are because this is going to solve our pursued problems then the new genetic breeding procedure like uh, these all the methods mark acid breeding development of gm crop this is also a new breeding procedure in that there are three uh, first generation is the the only one gene it was there the uh, bol god it was released the second generation gm cotton is the two genes cry1 as and cry2 ab because what happens when you are depend on only one gene the insect has the ability to develop the resistance by changing the the mutations so if you put the two genes there is a chance a less chance of simultaneously mutation of the the two genes and also developing the resistance that's why the two gene concept was released that is the second generation third generation is not practiced in india but uh, this uh, this is combined with the hd gene although it is illegally they are growing in some of the states 
but the xg gene is herbicide resistant uh, herbicide tolerant cotton so this is comes under the third generations in other many countries they are cultivating but in india it is not uh, approved the fourth one is the third one is the the, the fourth generation of it is coming so that is mainly the, the rna based one so uh, rna means uh, blocking some of the gene not to express it so this uh, example also i have that that we will be discussing more the last one is the genome editing genome editing with the crispr cas so now we'll see the i told you this portion only we are going to discuss now Geno genomic research new breeding procedure rna and genome editing so first the uh, genomic research you know that this is a major three gene resources okay the gene bank i told you that uh, gene bank is the uh, the major one where ncb if you go the site this ncb this is the ncb site this is a different world up put all together you can see that you will get all the uh, the sequence information data if you are good in bioinformatics no need to do any wet lab technique directly you can use it this much so much of data it's a tidal wave it is increasing daily it's keep on accumulating the data if you want to work in the if you have the knowledge in the bioinformatics so you can do the work research and publish it many the gene or uh, functional genes you can identify you can patent it it is freely it's available in the gene bank of course the second one is the embl which is most uh, well characterized uh, uh, by uh, the source here it's uh, data it's available third one is the dna data of uh, bank of japan this is a major one but we now what happens many uh, crops they are doing their own data bank for example the cotton we are having cotton gen dr u this lab i was there uh, in the usda dr u has developed this uh, cotton gen bank this is a new breeding procedure first we will see the molecular markers so this is uh, a molecule dna based markers can be classified into three categories now these are the three categories based on the working mechanism hybridization based marker pcr based marker and sequence based markers now we'll see the what is the hybridization based marker this mainly for the include the rflp restriction fragment length polymorphism this is the mostly old technique when i was doing uh, my msc program that time uh, tnu uh, dr jayaprakash they started this work on the rflp mainly to identify the, the polymorphic dna or some of the uh, useful markers that is linked with the, some of the economically important characters and it will review the difference among the individuals so the differential differentiation you can find out with the help of the restriction enzyme sites okay second one is the pcr based probably this everyone is doing now pcr based markers this rapd flp ssr issr these are mainly the pcr based markers if you have the primer with the conserved sequences or any specific motif regions if you are designed the primers based on the primers you can amplify and characterize or mainly the the polymorphic dna we can identify with the help of this the pcr based markers the third one is the sequence based marker this is the very popular one nowadays everyone has started using the single nucleotide markers and also genotyping based on the sequencing now this we can identify many important traits linked with some of the economically important genes this snp marker is very famous in the uh, human system human system uh, because now human genome completely sequenced in 2001 you can find that there is a lot of uh, inherited genes for example 400 um, uh, inherited disease genes are available in the human genome just one minute if you look at the infectious disease human genome 12000 infectious diseases are there but if you look at the the inherited genes 400 inherited disease genes are there in the 19th chromosome especially in the human all those things one example is the single uh, the sickle cell anemia it's only one single base it changes so the entire uh, the blood shape is changed so they these people will have the problem of respirations so like that there are number of uh, snp markers available in the human genome but cotton also we have that lot of uh, nowadays the chips also available if you want to screen your genome your uh, um, new cultivars you can use this the chip the ssr and snp are very uh, easy to use it you can see that abundantly it's present okay it's amenable for the automation because it's very difficult to do it manually so if you most of the uh, advanced lab and all they are using automation studies uh, even the pcr all those things the characterization everything they do it in the automations 
the robots are involved in this automations and co dominant in the expression this is the sn ssr if you take our snp this is the co dominant in the expression all these best qualities the marker choice everyone goes for the snp you can see that cotton snp 63 and snp 80k this is all very famous the snp it's commercially available the gene bank gene chips so because of the landmarks in the genomes we can use this characterizing the genetic resources we can do that one because across the world if you look at the people are looking for the gene for example the bt gene it is only 1700 base pairs the 1000 base pairs this completely revolutionized the cotton industry so their uh, the private income in india alone if you take that 600 to 700 crore per annum they are taking only royalty you can imagine that how much money is involved in the one single gene that is the 1700 base pairs okay so that way people can make money out of these genes that's why the genetic resources of people are looking so even the drug designing also people are looking for the genes if you are getting the genes then you can immediately go for the big business so the genetic resources you can identify and also secondly you can identify the genetic diversity how much it's similar and dissimilar we can identify dna fingerprinting you can do it the third one is the linkage and qtl mapping for important economic traits this is what i told you that economically important genes if you are identifying you can patent it you can commercialize it then genome wide association studies we can do it complete genome we can uh, uh, make it which chromosome which gene where it's exactly present we can identify and and, and do it that one then of course this is the breeding pe people you can help the marker selection you can tell that which parent should use it and which uh, segregated population that particular gene is there that we can identify so this is the the resources available in the cotton only i put it cotton because uh, if you look at the individual crops there are huge millions of uh, markers are available but in cotton you can see that 1 1 lakh uh, ssr markers are available snp you can see that 4 lakhs 59000 markers snp markers are available aflp is very less rapd of course uh, it's are very less with compared to this two only the major one among them again snp is the best one so snp array this uh, these all different uh, uh, this developed extensively used for the genetic mapping and this is used for the marker assisted breeding you can see that 119 genetic linkage maps are used in the the intra and the inter specific population have been developed in cotton so more than uh, 6 6497 qtls representing more than 30 agronomic traits are identified with the help of this the snp array now coming to the gm crops you know, i told you that more than 70 countries have developed biotech crops here this all the the different um, uh, commercially successful including the cotton cot in, in india only cotton is allowed that 15 countries are using cotton but in the year also people will ask that in the exams also you can see that which one is the highest uh, uh, area covered in these gm crops this soybean only 11 countries soybean is highest area they are cultivating cotton is uh, uh, country wise highest in the cotton so this particular data shows that if you use the gm crops you can decrease the carbon dioxide level in the uh, uh, global level so that is equal to uh, 16.7 million cars off in the take off from the road so that much uh, carbon dioxide emission can be reduced with the help of the gm crops why because this take consumes a reduced tillage so and reducing greenhouse gases emissions so this all some of the data about the the uh, gm crops growing now hd cotton also it has come down now uh, another important uh, uh, crop uh, the bt is exploited is there are 37 crops they are using the bt gene among them these are the famous one these are some of the fruit crops like banana strawberries apples and papaya these are some of the gm crops i listed out so this is the potato this is uh, this particular potato is having less of aspergins because this amino acid aspergin more in potato when you are deep frying it this leads to the accumulation of more of acrylamide this is very dangerous chemicals so when you do the it accumulates acrylamide so this particular gm crops it has a very less of amino acid aspergin so that's why this usda uh, us fda they release for the commercial cultivation of course i told you that uh, soybean is highest uh, used 
the ht is very famous in soybean now also in india also they are testing it fortunately only cotton is allowed in india gm crops this successful technology and two decades we completed there's no untoward incident except the ping bowlam incident the ping bowlam developed the resistance the reason also i will come uh, later in the slides so these are the five events released in india the monsanto used this uh, cryonase this is the first generation i told you this is the second generation bg2 of course simultaneously the north seeds this is a chinese uh, gene it's a fusion gene with the cryonase and cry2ab Cry2 then jk seeds this is actually the uh, indian uh, uh, event this is developed by the the bose research institute later he joined in the uh, joined in uh, uh, iit karakpur from where this gene is commercially through the with the help of the jk seeds hyderabad then the the fourth one is the the fifth one is the metallix event 9124 cryon ac cryon c this one sorry cryon c this metallix uh, from the bangalore actually is from our uh, our alumni only i think dr narayanan so he has developed this event so these all five events released in india so far and uh, now we have total 14 bt varieties we are released uh, from the cacr so among them the nine is we are commercially successfully so i am also one of the art, art uh, co developer in these uh, varieties okay so nine varieties we released now this commercialized uh, through uh, eight companies we are given the the seeds for the commercialization the the present problem is the ping bowlam i told you that ping bowlam is a, a problem because uh, uh, it was till 2009 10 it was okay up 2009 10 onwards this particular uh, insect developed the resistant ping bowlam the major reason is it's a monophagus monophagus means it's completely depend on the the cotton only because of that it has to the forced to develop the resistance so there are some genes it is uh, uh, it became the uh, resistant trait mainly it is uh, entering into the bowl system because the bowl rind the tissues the as such the protein is very less in the bowl rind so it's easily enters this particular author tabasnik and uh, carry 19 what he said that only we can overcome this uh, ping bowlam incident through transgenic approach only he said so what we have to do is mainly the bowl rind we need to concentrate tissue specific promoter where we also started the work and working on this we are screening the promoters to use the tissue specific promoter to express the bt gene only more on the the bowl rind so that we can overcome this work is we are carrying out these are two events it's already there uh, two program it's going on one is the the bioseed company from delhi they started cry to ai gene it is a br1 trial is going on presently but we have started the cry1 d gene so this uh, through um, uh, only protein studies we could make out that there is a, uh, a significant control of ping bowlworm so this particular gene we have with the help of the tissue specific promoter we are trying in nagpur this all the insect resistant gm crops in india this permitted for the the uh, trials only not for the commercial cultivation but trials this is all allowed of course cotton is successful okra and brinjal this brinjal also is completely tested approved because it has a specific uh, pigments called uh, the phenolic pigments the phenols that is very uh, some people that are allergic to the phenols that's why this is not uh, permitted in india it put it in the abines otherwise all the crops are this this all the trials are going on more than 20 crops under the the various stages in the trials now coming to the rni so you know that rna is a seen silencing technology it's successful controlling the viral disease especially the yellow mosaic virus of important crops the rna is technology makes usable double strand rna to interfere the rna functions mainly the rna function with the help of the dyser genes we can chop it uh, not allow for the translational only the transcription level we can silence the, the gene which you do not want so this particular paper you can see that it is related to the gossipol reduction so this particular person he is from our india one he is from trichy ganesan sunil kumar he is working at uh, endam university um 
Kirti Rathod. He is an NRA. He is from Rajasthan. I went to this lab, Kirti Rathod lab in 2001. He is the team leader, Kirti, Kirti Rathod. He is the uh, PDF uh, guy. He is working in this work. So what they did that, they, they block, they design the RNA, RNA, uh, uh, RNA sequence. So complemented to the cadence synthase gene. This particular synthase gene can be uh, blocked with the help of this or disturbing the, uh, uh, this particular gene not to express in the, the uh, Gossipol. This is the key steps for the biosynthesis of Gossipol. This we can block it not to express. But the interesting is this particular gene should express in the all other parts of the plant. Because otherwise, if the gene is not expressing, then the, the cotton will be eaten by most of the sucking and the insects. Especially, its cotton is attacked by more than 70 insect pests. Okay. So this particular gossipal is not present in the leaf or any stem or any portions. It will be eaten away by the all the insects. You farmers won't get anything. But this gene should not express in the in the oil. That's why this is a tissue specific. This uh, the cadence synthase gene is blocked only in the the tissue specific uh, seed where the the endosperm it won't express but other parts it will be expressing so why this is stopped is this uh, cotton oil we can use it for the consumption now also they're using it five percent oil is mixed with our normal vegetable oil uh, but if you remove this gossip oil because this is very difficult to digest it for human so if you block it not to express in the seed so that we can overcome the, the deficiency of oil, oil consumption. Because India is the highest oil consuming country. 35 to 40 percent oil we are importing from the other countries, especially Canada, the Sanola oil we are importing. That we can overcome if the cotton oil is used for the consumption. So this is what uh, the, uh, the transgenic uh, uh, materials it's expressing. If, if you, you can see that 10 microgram per milligram of wild type seeds, it is expressing the gossipol. But the RNA lines, you can see that 0.2 microgram only, it's expressing. So this way, we can manage the, the, the gossipol content in the seed. So this is commercially approved for the commercial cultivation. So we are also, uh, the ICR also uh, requested the Kirti Rathod he is ready to give the materials for backcrossing program so that we can use this material and we, because our area is highest uh, cotton cultivating area we can use these lines and reduce the the gossipal content in our varieties cotton varieties another rni is uh, this is this abdul karimo he is from uzbekistan he is a famous uh, scientist now he become the minister Next World Cotton Conference is uh, he is only organizing this Sabdu Karimo. So he has developed the, the um, RNA I based the transgenic lines of phyto, phytochrome transcript. Like the phytochrome is an important gene sequence. If you block it 70%, if you suppress this one, then 30% of uh, the remaining uh, phytochrome is it's influencing to exhibit vigorous root and vegetative growth okay and also we are getting the early flowering uh, cotton because cotton is a long uh, duration crop like uh, five to six months but if you are getting early flowering so that we can one or two months we can reduce it early flowering so this is possible through um, rna technique to block this phytochrome transcript so this is they developed so the yield also you can see that fiber growth and this root and shoot growth so they developed this, the RNA technique, using RNA technique, the transgenic lines they develop. Coming to the, the genome editing, these are all the different four techniques available. Among them, I'm going to tell about this, this three, four sites about the CRISPR-Cas gene editing system. Okay. The CRISPR-Cas is, uh, it's revolutionized the world. It's going to do, do it again. So what are that origin? What is the mechanism? What is the application? Quickly, we'll see that. Probably you must be knowing because there is a heterogeneous group of people. So they, some people have good knowledge about this CRISPR Cas system. Of course, TNA also many uh, pro funded projects going on in the in our institute in your university. So the CRISPR Cas system is very very powerful technique. 
now we'll see quickly what is this origin so the the definition is the the full form is the clustered this is a clustered okay regularly interspaced this is all the uh, black spot is the the uh, interspaced repeat sequence palindromic sequence the, you know the palindromic sequence if you read it uh, forward and reverse it will give the same meaning like madam malayalam like that so this is the the palindromic sequence so it is where it is present clustered this is all the red color this is the violet orange this is all the gene is the crispr locus it is present present in the in the array form okay the other one is the the cas9 genes this is the casp crispr associated genes the sequences this is all the available so this is called the the crispr sequence okay so where it is found it is found in the mostly bacteria okay who first reported you can see that japan ek ishinomo et al osaka university they reported 1987 what it is the, the how it is happening is crispr sequence are derived from the dna fragments of bacteriophage you know that bacteria is attacked by the the bacteriophage so whenever this attacks this bacteriophage gene is taken one particular sequence some of the concert sequence and keep is a representative samples like that it keeps so it is taken from the the bacteriophage so whenever the similar bacteriophage attacks this bacteria so that this can fight back with this the invading bacteriophage so that is the the principles okay cas9 is very interesting enzymes there are different uh, cas9 enzymes are there cas13 is there 12 is there 14 is there like that cas9 is very famous so what it does it is it is recognizing and cleaving specific dna strands okay this is well characterized streptococcus pyrogens so this particular uh, cas9 system is depend made on the two factor one is the target sequence where exactly target it should be the complement to the target sequence second one is a pam sequence that is a protospecies adjacent motif this particular two reasons it's exactly we can it will make a cut double cut okay now we'll see the mechanisms so i told you that the representative sample it keeps whenever the similar bacteria is attacks the bacteriophage is attacks the bacterial system immediately it will produce the crispr locus transcripts this is the pre crispr rnas then it will be chopped by the the transcriptase then it will go for the individual the synthesis of this particular complex where this rna guided rna targeting with the uh, the cas genes the, this is the cas enzy cas enzymes with the specific sites it's available there's a complementary sequence it is there so what happens if it suppose this orange color it is invading this particular gene it segregates immediately here it's already representative sample is there. similarly it will go and attacks and chop the dna invading dna so this way it protects the cells but this was now you can see that this was uh, reported in uh, 87 but these two people proposed that this can be used for genome editing in 2012 okay this everybody knows that charpentier and jennifer dona in 2020 they got the nobel prize why because this they proposed that they published and patented also in 2012 that this particular system can be used for genome editing okay because of that they got the nobel prize so everyone started working on the genome editing with this crispr cas system then the nobel prize committee recognized their work and they given the 2020 nobel prize how this works you can see that how you can design your uh, uh, crispr cas okay so this is a two independent sequence one is the the crispr rna this is the crispr rna what the pink color you are seeing another one is the the tracer rna this one black one so this was independent okay but what these people told that this can be linked these two regions can be linked with join with these linker molecules and make a one molecules okay that you can guide as a single guide rna so this is became this you can custom design in your lab system okay when you able to do this particular this particular designing of the complementary sequence suppose your target dna if you know the sequence you can design the 
this particular around 2025 nucleotide sequence of the complementary sequence where you want to introduce your gene then you can combine the 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 tracer rna so that this will guide so you can make it a single guide rna so this is called the single guide rna if you single guide rna if you can use it you can transfer it to the the the, the target organisms this is all the action it takes place it's a complex it forms the complex reads and identify the complementary sequence then its binding happens then it will be dna will be cleaved so this way you can design according to the the sequence where you want to introduce your gene that's why this is become the pre precise in the genome editing so what will happen if you do this this two genome editing this particular method this happens two way it is happening one is the this is your target gene sequence you want to make it cut here okay when you when it's cut here there are two different action it takes place in the naturally one is the non homologous end joining when you are cut this one then what will happen there is a non homologous the other regions because this get damaged the gene got disturbed these are some functional genes you can take that these are some functional genes but when you are introducing this particular cut this double cut then it's uh, the gene got disturbed by adding the non homologous joining because dna repair me mechanism takes place if this kind of repair mechanism takes place then gene got disturbed this is called the insertional inactivations you know that insertion inactivation it happens in the gas gene expression also you can normally this is used initially in this case the you can identify the knock out the genes that's why the gene disruption you can identify suppose if you are, you are introducing to identify knock out the genes so you can use this technique so this way we can identify the the economically important genes okay the other way if you want to introduce your gene this you can design a, such a way that homologous recombinations you can suppose this is the defective genes we can design the normal homologous genes so normal genes we can introduce with this help of your guide rna where this will homologous recombination will take place because this is the the region is you are introducing regions you want to replace it or single nucleotide you want to replace it where we can introduce the, the homologous gene so that you can design you can custom design your gene you can introduce here in this case gene replacement will take place or you can correct some of the, the homologous recombination or homologous regions you can make, make it replacement you can do it so the, this way you the you can design the the crispr cas system this is a very precise so i was i for transformation also we are doing the transformation cotton so where this is a random process wherever the complementary sequence there or non homologous also it will go and join but in this case i can i know that cotton sequence completely genome sequence are available in the data bank i can design the custom design your guide rna where my gene should go and integrate i can design it accordingly i can introduce the gene into the specific site so this is possible gene replacement or creating the homologous recombination is possible in this case in in other cases the you can identify the gene knock out the gene okay main purpose of the this crispr is now you can make out the knock out the gene you can identify the economically important genes this all some of the applications you can see that epigenetic modification you can do it or you can make it make not to express some of the genes this is called the on off mechanism of the gene you can put it on or you can put it off with help of the cas9 system this is single strand dna cleavage we can make it okay this again cas9 cas12 system is used here is the nucleic acid imaging you can do it with the help of the cas9 cas13 here rna editing rna editing already we saw that many examples rna editing can possible with the help of cas9 cas13 here you can see the molecular diagnosis snp genotyping this is very famous in now genotyping we can do identify some of the important crops you can identify it. of course this is one of the first crop uh, the japanese people made it that crispr based tomato crop this already it's published in 2021 okay it's it's available in the market this particular crispr edited uh, uh, tomato in crispr based many research work people are working on mainly to uh, uh, introduce the crop is, because this is a cutel traits also we can try that one drought resistant gene people are trying to introduce of course pest resistant pest and disease or other quality that will increase the disable or agricultural yield 
the first crispr crops expect to be commercialized available in the vaxicon that has increased the amylopectin content this is also one of the the breakthrough it is coming it will come in the any time this is all the advantage of the crispr cas system this is a, this you can design if you have the uh, the sequence data if it's available you can make it uh, make guide or guide rna cas9 and other dna templates this we are also doing for the the insect resistant uh, transgenic cotton we are trying that one with the help of the proteomic studies we can do this one then it's a simple to introduce into the cell of course in the embryo early stage of embryo also it's possible it's highly specific i told you that based on the sequence it will go and uh, get integrated efficient it's a ability to multiplex yeah many means we can do it at a time not only one gene many quality traits you can do that it is a versatile of course and i told you that this is going to influence the technology in life science and uh, uh, we can with the help of the crispr the human i think they are going to rewrite the sequence mainly to improve the existing or uh, existing the uh, unwanted gene and useful genes we can bring together why we are doing all those things because our demand is keep on increasing you can see that uh, we are now 140 crore million uh, 140 crore people we have now we have overtaken the china also but china you can see although the area wise is there more but their land is cultivable land is if you see that it is very less with compared to india because of that we are able to feed multiplying mouths so you can see that us is one but with the population so much of population we are able to do it because of the our cultivable land but still every institute every crop research institute they given target that keep on increasing yield because our population keep on increasing exponentially this is my concluding uh, remarks with the shrinking resources and exploding populations we we'll have to deploy the cutting edge technology especially like the crispr and other uh, uh, rna technologies should be encouraged because many states allowing to do the even the funding also it's now reduced uh, not to much manipulate for the genetic manipulation like that but this should be this should not be the case where we should encourage these studies especially the cutting edge technologies we should use it because only thing is we we'll have to do the the uh, cautions like the bio bioethics and biosafety actually biosafety is very very intra, in, important area where i am uh, i am the biosafety officer so i to complete take up the biosafety what are the merits and demerits available i know that so even we are taking uh, giving a training to the many uh, african countries also we are giving the two three trainings also we conducted mainly to uh, follow the biosafety protocols only thing is it should be safe to the environment and the human because they you know once the environment is spoiled so ultimately it will uh, harmful to the human only so we want to take care of the the bio uh, bio safety measures not too much uh, affect or uh, affect the environment as well as the human only thing is this all these technologies should have the inclusive growth not only the, suppose uh, inclusive growth means everyone should grow some sometime what happens only the uh, some states will grow or some company will grow it is not it, it should not be the case where everyone should grow and also the socio economic and environmental security we should preserve it if judiciously honest and blended with this novel technologies and support by appropriate policies this is very important we need the funding uh, proper uh, support then only we can make the biotechnology can lead to the evergreen revolutions thank you every culture is bound to fail if agriculture fails if you have any questions probably you can ask me i will i am a thanks dr sandeep <laughs> so just i finish so thanks for the inviting me to the give the lecture so i am uh, really very happy to be here thank you if you have any doubts uh, you can ask of course crispr uh, tna is uh, now taking many projects i could see that even the uh, dbt program most of the program 80% of the project is you can see that now everything is now dbt website it's available you can see what are the projects they are supporting or funding you can find out that the lab uh, the working on the crispr mostly they are trying to develop the crispr cas ikrisa they developed well uh, the training centers even anybody is interested interested you can approach the 
they increase that the group is there is their website also they are regularly conducting the the training program for the crispr cas system uh, two scientists of our group they uh, we have sent the all young scientists we are encouraging young scientists because now we all move to the admin side so young people we are encouraging so that they can contribute uh, for uh, precise uh, genome editing program in the many crops of course we are doing cotton many crop you can plan it any doubt is you completely understood was it easy to understand or follow it up okay ah yes but by employing genome editing we can is it possible to improve ag agronomic traits sir for making them mechanical harvesting exactly so uh, what was asking is the architecture of the plant yes. that we can modify already the working is go work is going on in our institute by um, the conventional method only that, that they are doing it now but this is possible to make it but the only thing is this architect is it's very difficult to do it but this is possible with the help of the qtl characters because this is a multiple qtl characters are involved with that we can do it but breeding program already they made it uh, a very compact for the the mechanical harvesting even all the hybrids uh, not uh, india may it's all in hybrid only but uh, if you look at the australia usa brazil they already they developed the the compact uh, the architect of the cotton so that the mechanical harvesting it's very easy to do it india what we are facing problem in india we are using hybrid technology hybrid means it is bushy growth okay all the sides it's all expanding for mechanical harvesting it's uh, it's easy okay you can go and pick it but it is not amenable for the the um, mechanical harvest but only by hand picking only it's possible the hybrid technology okay so architect need to be as you said architecture of the plant should be you have to design with the crispr no one started probably you if you if you want to work on cotton you can try that one so architecture of the plant with the help of the crispr how we can modify it that is possible you can do it thank you sir yeah so um you were telling about pink ball worm resistance uh, the the pt cotton has developed resistance for pink ball worm yes and uh, i didn't get one point like uh, related to promoter which is we have to create promoter specific to the ball ring ah yes yes so that, will you yeah i will period? explain you so what happened uh, if you look at the leaf the protein is more protein expression is more in the leaf okay bowl it is very less bowl rind then square this all very less only the leaf is the protein expression is more it's naturally it's available because this uh, uh, the the protein content of the uh, normal leaf it will be more means uh, uh, this particular gene expression is more in the the leaf tissues is exponentially is multi uh, uh, the promoter they used is the constitutive promoter 30 by s 30 base constitute to promoter it's continuously expressing and the leaf leaf tissues are more so the content also more in the leaf tissues but if you look at the the bowl it's a green tissues are there the green tissue if you estimate the protein content it will be very low with compared to the leaf okay so what happens this insect the pink bowl worm first what it will it will happen it will first scratch it it won't eat first it initially it was eating now it's later the it is understood that you if you are eating it's a natural mechanism if you eat that the green tissues so it cannot uh, it cannot survive so what happens it scratches in, it goes inside to the the bowl bowl if you tissue if you see that inside the cellulose material only the cellulose material there is no any much expression of the cry protein so it can once it is enter into the bowl so it can happily live there even if you spray it it nothing will happen to the insects so that way they develop the resistance okay now what we are telling is now we can increase the the expression of the the tissue specific promoter in the bowl rind bowl rind more of protein so that when it's started scratching that time only the protein can take care of the blocking or killing the the bowl worms that's why we are we are proposing that the green tissue specific promoter uh, expression of particular protein especially cry d we are doing that one cry d 
so that we can increase the the pro, the mortality rate more okay yeah yes sir so how what about now the integration of ht in bt yes uh, what is the status now any uh, government regulation is uh, underway or still it is in uh, yeah yeah this is a very very uh, important questions in the present uh, scenario because uh, the ht cotton already tested by the myco uh, that is the the gene was given by the monsanto now monsanto's so much of transformation takes taken place monsanto company purchased by the bayer now the bayer has taken by the indian company that is the the crystal crystal india i think they have taken that uh, they purchased the the company now so what happened this ht gene already well characterized and it is uh, there are two genes used here one is the the um, epsp synthase gene they have taken from the uh, agrobacterium this particular gene so this particular gene they uh, they two event they developed one is the rr rr only rr that is a roundup ready that is rr so that is with only one particular event it was having some problem in the um, pollen during if you spray on the during flowering stage so this become the uh, sterile it become the sterile that's why this event was withdrawn it the event name is 1442 so this was withdrawn then later the another event called rrf that is rr flex this gene was they introduced again so this we can use it without any problem of two times you can go for the spraying this was well characterized and is trial also we have taken brl1 trial brl2 trials there are totally 3 years they conducted uh, even cacr is one of the part of the the trials uh, we conducted at sirsa as well as coimbatore then uh, nagpur all the three centers we well characterized it is all approved almost about to release it then what happened there is a lot of ngos are available you must be knowing that ngos non governmental organization they were telling that they went to the government uh, minister and told that we cannot release this uh, uh, that ht cotton because the cotton is intercropped with many pulses in uh, most of the regions you can see that pulses they are intercropping if you do the spraying then they cannot do the intercropping so they were they told against this this ht cotton they told that we didn't want the ht cotton should not released in india like that there is some controversy they, still the debate is going on what are the merits and demerits what are the problem how much it is they are telling the company is telling that the intercrop those who are not doing intercrop they can do it okay some people are only doing that intercrop some small farmers marginal farmers they are doing it but the big farmer and all they are doing they are not doing the intercropping system so they can go for like that the company is fighting but this company uh, the ngos are telling that no 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 this uh, spoiling the the environment also we are dumping so much of uh, uh, herbicide in the land so that it will spoil the crop like that they are they are fighting but company is again telling that uh, this is degradable biodegradable this herbicide so within 3 uh, or 4 days that completely the activity 50% goes up like that every time parliaments this is the question comes to us so what are that uh, advantage what are the disadvantage the company is telling that there is a um, uh, big farmers or the labor problem is there so they can go for the ht cotton but uh, the ngos are telling they no it is uh, it's spoiling the uh, um, soil as well as the intercrop system is um, intercrop is problem so then super weeds also develop that's what this also they reported the super weeds develop the resistant to the herbicide this also issues there there are some advantage and disadvantage the problem is the labor problem is coming in in, in india because no most of the people are moved from uh, village to city so they are facing problem of labor so the farmers want this technology but the government is not releasing officially because of that what happens illegally many states like uh, we went for survey andhra pradesh or telangana uh, madhya pradesh then madhya not madhya pradesh madhya pradesh there is so much uh, gujarat maharashtra and punjab these all the states already they are doing cultivating illegally we surveyed uh, with uh, dr shiva reddy he was the chairman the dbt nominated uh, scientist i was one of the member in that we all went we collected the samples from uh, each states randomly 
not we didn't go to the extreme location of the cotton field only road side where we can stop our vehicle we collected randomly some samples we found that 20 to 35% of the samples are positive you can imagine that means if you go to the extreme uh, conditions like field condition you can get people are growing it without any problem but the government also can't do that one so with this all this development now last year what happened they again the crystal company crystal uh, that's uh, the monsanto uh, followed follower like uh, bayer and now crystal the crystal recently has taken over the crystal is approached the government of india and told that we again want that now gse told that this data all already is over because is the trial was taken 9, 2009 10 11 so the data is very old now again you do it with uh, two years at least or one year data you generate it and find out that how it's effective so then they approached the csr we said that okay we are ready to uh, test it so then uh, uh, but the gss has given one uh, confirmation that you need to take permission from the state government noc so noc is uh, given then you can do the testing that's what they told this is the last year story then we return that uh, letter to the maharashtra government because our region is our station is located in maharashtra so we return but strictly they told that no more tri trials of the ghc cotton so we didn't conduct any trials again this company people went to the minister directly they met the prime minister and told that these all the issues farmers are facing labor problem okay that again uh, the uh, tillage less tillage work so the carbon dioxide emission all these points they made it very strong point they made it they went to the prime minister and told that we want to release this without any more trial because the state government each state government have their own uh, uh, rules and regulations we didn't want to follow that gsc already approved it gsc approved what the condition they put that if the state government approves you can commercialize it that's all so they they had given now but the state government is not allowing to culture it this is the current status of the st cotton but again the company people also they won't because the millions of dollars they spent it they won't keep quiet they are ready to uh, again meet the pm and they want to tell that because farmer wants that one they are facing problem of labor even cotton picking labor they are not getting weeding where they will get so any time it will come and eat the market of the st cotton because uh, like the uh, they stop the the transgenic um, mustard so much they stop but suddenly one day they declare that yes mustard is released it is already released in the market it is there like that any time it will come and eat the rest cotton probably this forthcoming season also it may come because this company people are not keeping quiet even they are coming uh, recently we had the uh, directors and vc meeting at uh, delhi i was attended the industry wants that rest cotton should be released in this forthcoming season so they are they are already making uh, you know spad work that with the minister they it will come at any time that is the current status because of to stop yeah. cultivation of pthd or it is some other reason for glyphosate no yes actually what happened glyphosate is uh, um, permitted actually it was released in india or permitted in india for only the tea garden where the tea gardens are there so they only they uh, released but later the uh, these people develop the resist the actually the bare product only that one the the glyphosate so then they develop the transgenic cotton according to their herbicide so that this can be used to control the weeds so that way uh, glyphosate is uh, safe only of course they permitted for uh, tea garden now it is they are using the, all the crop area also there is again one more uh, the funny questions came that crop area non crop area crop area means they uh, you cannot use in the field conditions okay non crop area where the weeds are there you can spray it there the tea garden is permitted but what they are telling now the cotton i am growing here this is the crop area the two line beach me that and <laughs> in between the the two lines it is a non crop area i can spray here so this is what the the reply given by the the many uh, seed company people but that is not acceptable anyhow the uh, glyphosate is safe and they uh, this is really allowed for the now this crop also but some states like uh, the telangana now the newly formed states telangana they told that uh, uh, this um, this particular uh, 
uh, glyphosate is banned in their, their state. But Tamil Nadu, it is permitted. Because Tamil Nadu tea garden is more. They already the permitted. There are each state have their own uh, rules and regulations they are making it. But GAC not able to do that. Any the blanket recommendation that all the states can be approved. They put the condition that if it is a, the, because the agriculture is a state department, state uh, related work. So the state only should take care. They only permit like that they told. So I thank uh, Dr. Bal Subramaniam or not the pioneer biotechnologist team C S T N A U because. He was a senior and uh, his uh, first person started with microbi microbiology and moved to the transgenics. And he's have more experience on how to handle the uh, vectors and uh, my microbe system and also now plant system. And uh, you know that the total story of BT, I attended his lecture online in my office. So whatever the, he, uh, he went through all the process from Bolgard 1 to Bolgard 2 and finally, the present day all cry modifications uh, up to present day complex cry and cry on a b system so his experience really uh, uh, eye opener for the, all the students here because uh, the whole regulatory process and how the bt cotton came in india and how it is surviving now it is going to another level that adding the ht and also it is going to be another big changes is going to day to day changes is happening. Uh, definitely his experience in this area along with Dr. Amuda is not here today because he's another uh, one more leading uh, uh, biotechnologist working in cotton for a long period of time. So their experience always uh, helpful and whenever the TNAU uh, call them for any external examiner or their lecture or inviting seminar, they readily accept our invitation and come over to Coimbatore and always uh, talk to our students and also scientists and uh, many of the projects we always have a discussion with him. In that, it's a rich experience, always help us. I really thank on behalf of Tamil Nadu Agriculture University and the Department of Plant Breeding and Genetics uh, for your wonderful lecture today. And uh, really, our students are really benefited on that. I thank you on behalf of me and also the university. Thank you, sir. Thank you being here with us. Thank you.